and I am a very poor fundraiser, you know, very poor fundraiser, very poor fundraiser. I don't have the skill and the art of fundraising. Till today, I am a lousy fundraiser. I don't even know how to properly market my own books. Yesterday, I wanted to introduce my books, you know, but when I was praying, I felt a very holy presence of God just shrouding me. And I was so scared to talk about my books. <laughs> I know in that atmosphere, I don't even want to say anything beyond what I am commissioned to speak. I'm very scared. Today, I had the liberty, permission to say, that's why I introduced my books, you know. But in all these eight years, not only our network didn't go into debt, but also we expanded from one channel to eight channels covering the entire globe, and still we have not gone into debt. Although we don't have a big overflow, but God supplies all our needs month to month to pay the bills. Just as he gives manna in the morning and in the evening, he supplies us through his children who generously give towards our network. But we should never ever make a merchandise of the anointings of God. Make the church a money profit making venture. Those are sins in the eyes of God. And that's what happened in the temple and that's what is happening today they were so money minded that the blind and the lame and those who are in need of a touch from God were not allowed into the temple if you read Matthew 21 14 it says that as soon as the Lord kicked out all these thieves, the blind and the lame came into the temple unto the Lord Jesus. So all this while, the priests kept them out of the temple because they are blemish. They are untouchables. You're blind, you're lame. How can you come and defile the temple? That's what they thought. They were kept away. That's where real ministry is, you know. Not only those who can give offerings. You, didn't, you don't give appointments to those who give large amount of money to your ministry. You know, I say this with all humility to the glory of God. Every day, lots of people want to meet me in person. And some people, they know how to trap ministers. They know, no, if they ask ordinarily for an appointment, the minister may not give. So they'll say, oh, we have a large offering to give personally to the minister. Then immediately they'll get an appointment. So my secretary always comes and tells me, you know, there are lots of people lining up in a queue. Some are going to give you 100,000 rupees. 100,000 rupees does not mean $100,000, you know. So in that range, so I looked at her and I told her one day, look, stop telling me about the numbers. What about that person who, who gives one dollar? Is he any lesser than the person who gives ten thousand dollars? A person who gives ten thousand, he could give ten thousand. The person who gives one dollar, he could give only one dollar. Is he, he, are his needs any lesser than the person who gives ten thousand or hundred thousand? So I told her, if I don't have time for the person who gives one dollar, neither do I have time for the person who gives 10,000. So in next time, don't you ever talk to me like this. I drew a line. Till today, all those people are waiting. <laughs> I told them, if you really want to give to the ministry, why do you need to give me in person? You just can come and put your money in the offering box and go. Isn't it? 
you can just come and give the money to our ministry and they'll give you an official receipt and you, you can just go. Why do you want to trap me with an enticement? That is the Balak spirit. Trying to trap with an enticement. My dearly beloved brothers and sisters, let's check our church. Let's check our hearts. How has our church become? Number four, God will judge those who will despise and control God's last day's move. You know, the last day's move of God is going to be so awesome. It is comparable to anyone who will despise or try to control God's final outpouring will be comparable to them who will lay their hands and touch God's anointed. Because this last day's move will be so pure of the Holy Spirit, minus the flesh, minus the excesses. It will be such a pure work of the Holy Spirit, so much so, if you come against it, or you speak against it, it is equivalent to committing the unpardonable sin against the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus himself said, if any man speaks against me, it's okay, I'll forgive you. But if you speak against the Holy Spirit, that sin will be upon you. So those who despise and control the last day's move. You know, when the Lord Jesus came into Jerusalem, you read in Matthew 21, verses 1 to 16. When he came into Jerusalem, he told his disciples to go and get him an S and a colt tied by a stake on which no man had ever sat. You read this in Mark 11, 2 and Luke 19, 30. Who, what is the S and the colt? They represent two people group, the children and the youths who have not been used so far yet. Like no man has ever sat on them. The children and the youths. We see little pockets of revival among the youths, but you haven't seen them rising up like an army yet. Unused, tight to a stick, on which no man has ever sat yet. Now Jesus calls his two of his disciples. Luke 19, verse 30 to 35 tells us. He calls them and he says, Go and bring those two to me. So when God wants to use the children and the youths in these last days, true ministers of God must recognize this. What God is doing in these present times. We must recognize this. The time in which past that God used some big stars are over. Now that time is coming upon these little children, upon the youths who will do a radical ministry for God like we have never seen anything like this before. And the older ministers must be willing to step back and be like a father, be like a mother to these little ones and encourage them, come on, go forth, go. That's what we should do, the older ministers. Not tie them back again to the stake. If you do that, you are coming against the move of God. We should not do that the true ministers of God. Look at the disciples. They went immediately. They untied the donkeys. And the Lord also said, if anybody stops you, tell them the master needs them. So which means, 
there will be some people who say, why are you doing that? They must he- know the master has need of the children. The master has need of the youths. Their time has come now. And they will rise up like shining stars and do great exploits for God. That time has come now. The master has need of them. And no minister should stand against that need of the master. The two groups there. You know, when the Lord Jesus sat on the donkey and the cult following the donkey, two groups accompanied the Lord Jesus. One went before him and one was behind him. If you read Matthew 21 verse 9 and Mark chapter 11 verse 9, it says one group went before him and one group went behind him. So who are those two groups? The children, the youths, and a special group, adults waiting to be used by God. There is a special breed. Some adults waiting to be used by God. But just waiting all this while. Some people have come and said to me, you know, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. God said, wait. (laughs) How long should I wait? I answered them, just wait. (laughs) Simple, isn't it? If God says wait, you just wait. How do I know how long that waiting will last? Three three peoples in that first group. Children, youths, and those adults waiting to be used by God. They They went before in front of the donkey. Then behind, seniors, the matured ministers, the disciples following behind, All of them knew their calling and their mission. What is their calling and their mission? You know, somebody must have told these two groups what to do. Because the Bible tells us in Matthew 21 verse 9, Mark 11 verse 9 and 10, and Luke 19 verse 38, and John 12 13, they all began to proclaim, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. How did they know how to say all that? And they also proclaimed the coming of the kingdom of God. How did they know that? Someone had taught them. Someone has told them. This is the way you shall proclaim as the Lord comes behind you. The forerunners those who goes to prepare the way of the Lord. That's what they do. Preparing the way of the Lord for the King of glory to come in. That's our job. Proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom of God. Matthew 24, 14. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world and then the end will come. The kingdom of God is coming. The good news of the kingdom of God is coming must be preached. Don't just stop at preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must also preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the doing and the dying and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Don't just stop there. We must also say, He's coming back again. Not just coming back, but He's coming with His kingdom. To set his kingdom on this roll. That gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world. And the church must be prepared for that. When youths are trained and released, they will do great exploits to tear down the enemy's strongholds. You know what the older generation could not do or did not do, God has reserved for this younger, the next generation to do, to tear down. And they have that robust tenacity 
like a bulldog you know the elders the seniors we may sometimes tend to give up it's okay let's not do it now let's do it sometime later because we are getting old you know but the youngers one they would be their blood would be boiling right they have all this zeal isn't it you know once i saw a vision i was leading a bunch of youths to war and this was setting in a english castle and you know how english castles look like right so on the other side i saw all these demonic hosts and they had all kinds of modern guns and machine guns in their hands and on my team we had nothing and i was leading the pack and uh, as we were about to cross the bridge we need to cross the bridge to the other side and the enemies are all standing there and they all look very big and my group were all teenagers young youths all very small but they all had that tenacity faith they looked at me they said leader let's go let's get them <laughs> and when i look at that time they all looked like giants i said no wait a minute <laughs> i was chickening you know but this youth they said no come on let's go let's fight and all those demons they were standing say come i was didn't know what to do <laughs> so and then i, I turned and looked back at the youth they were saying leader let's go let's fight i said but we have nothing that doesn't matter <laughs> at least before we die at least punch one demon <laughs> i said look wait <laughs> so then i saw you know oh my i don't think i can stop their zeal all right let come what may come so i took one step forward and those demons rained down bullets on me i was hit with all bullets and i dropped down didn't die i dropped down to a kneeling position and the bullets stuck me all over my body and blood was flowing out and i was just like bowed over almost dead and all those demons were singing with great shout of jubilation oh we have shot the leader the leader is down like white house down <laughs> in that position i slowly turn and look backwards the youths they were like uh, our leader is down what shall we do now it was a question mark but not a loss of faith you know their purpose was still there they had a question what shall we do now then suddenly it seemed like i got life back i stood up i looked at my body about 10 bullets had pierced through I looked I took out the bullet <laughs> Have you seen the matrix <laughs> Something like that you know I just took out the bullet One by one I took out all the bullet and the blood stained clothes became brand new again and I looked at my team and they all were you know <laughs> great leader what shall we do now i said charge <laughs> see that's the power of the youths amen so they should be released their time has come now to take on all the forces of the enemies of god Amen. And the children must be trained and released. The children have a very special anointing waiting for them. Psalms 82 tells us they will receive new songs and praise from God's kingdom which will put the enemy to flight. 
just their singing you know why god wants to give that to the children he is going to put satan to shame by the very anointing that rested on him it was the anointing of praise and worship that was on him god is going to take that and give to these little children even babies that will be an insult to him isn't it if you fight with your own peer it's not so bad you know okay i'm 51 i fight with someone who's 51 or older that's not too bad but if a 2 year old comes to fight with me and can defeat me it's an insult <laughs> isn't it that's what god is going to do he is going to take that anointing that rested upon lucifer and give to these babies the suckling infants and the little children and they are going to praise and worship god and put all the enemy to fly amen and you know when the group that walked before the lord jesus it says eh uh, the babies were crying how did the babies cry mothers were carrying their babies and walking in front of the group and the babies were crying were they really crying that's what the human here heard but that's not what god heard you know what they were crying hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of god it appeared they were crying but they were not crying they were praising god you know this morning as i was sitting down and writing that my spiritual eyes were opened and i saw that vision the mothers were carrying the babies in their hands and as the babies started crying they were praising god their entire stomach body began to shine with light it lighted up and the light came out of them and strike every demon spirit that was standing around that region it will totally rout the enemies when these little babies is from 0 to 3 years of age you know that's the call that god gave me the amended god gave me to prepare the babies and the toddlers for the coming of the lord for the coming move of god you know bobby con last night when he was seated beside me he just turned and looked at me and he said you know i was praying for you this afternoon and i saw you surrounded by little children he didn't know anything about my call and we last met several years ago he said i saw little children they were all standing and seated beside you and they were adoring you like they were adoring a leader then i told him about my call that god gave me to train the little babies from 0 to 5 years that's a new mandate the lord gave me because their time is coming now the little children the babies must be prepared don't just give them coloring books to color that is old testament times <laughs> yes these are the last days in these last days they must be taught how to praise and worship god once you give them a fish to fish teach them how to fish then they will pick songs from the kingdom of god by their own and then when they begin to sing and begin to glorify god it will put the enemy to flight <laughs> teach them about the gifts of the spirit don't think that they don't understand you think that they don't understand but they do understand their mind you may think they don't understand but the spirit knows you know little samuel was 3 years old when his mother brought him into the temple and when god spoke to him he must be anywhere between 3 to 5 years old when god first spoke to him and if you read the portion of scripture the prophecy or the revelation that god gave to him 
is an adult related revelation i used to wonder how in the world did samuel understood that you know what matters it does not matter whether samuel understood or not but samuel been a prophet received the word and he committed to eli that was all that was necessary to be done it doesn't matter whether these little ones understand or not our duty is to prepare the little ones for a prophetic unction that is going to come upon them that's our responsibility that's our job to do it doesn't matter whether the babies understand or not you know what bewildered me further the lord then one day spoke to me said you must also prepare special programs for fetuses that are 6 months and older so i said lord jesus <laughs> said this is something is little past stretch he said for babies if you want me to prepare programs i can prepare programs i know babies can watch a television show but how can a fetus that is in the mother's stomach watch a program then the lord told ask me a question like this haven't you read the bible where it says and mary visited john the baptist mother when she was 6 months pregnant as soon as the baby in the mu- the stomach heard the mary's voice john was filled in the holy spirit at that moment and the lord said a 6 month old fetus can hear clearly sound 3 days later i saw a scientific study that proved scientifically that among all the organs of a fetus the ears first develop completely i was surprised when i saw that medical report you know the ears develop first So the Lord said you just prepare a program and you tell all the mothers to just come and sit before the TV and the babies in the womb they will hear the voice and I will fill them with my spirit Amen, Amen. Finally The Lord Jesus Christ rebuked all the Pharisees and the leaders who came against him who told him to shut the mouth of the babies from singing the people from making noise you read this in Matthew 21 verse 15 Mark um, sorry Luke 19:39 to 40 and John 12:19 And the last warning the Lord Jesus gives is this Ministers of God coming against this last days prophetic movement will be severely judged And I will close with this incident that happened just recently a few months ago In India we have a saintly man of God called brother Mohan C Lazarus He was called by God. He's an apostle of prayer in India. So he was called by God last year to go to all the districts in Indi- in South India in our state to conduct a 12 hours of fasting prayer movement. So there were 32 districts in South India in our state. So he organized a prayer meetings and the Lord called me to televise live those events on our network so this went on all throughout last year and it climaxed on this year when we had a large gathering of 200,000 people on the capital of our state so while this was going on there is a city called trichy in south india and a family a prayer group from a certain church they were watching all our telecasts and they were so moved by god and they began attending all these prayer meetings 
and they were begin to pray ardently for the nation and for the state and for the cities and when their church pastor heard about this prayer group going from city to city praying with all these other people for the nation he strongly rebuked them and he said don't go and pray like that god does not want us to pray like that and strongly rebuked them he said first you pray for your own husband pray for your own children pray for your own family pray for your own church stop praying for the nation he strongly rebuked them and then on a sunday service in front of the entire church he condemned this prayer group and he insulted them publicly so this poor lady she wrote me a letter she said dear uncle in india you know they address the older as uncle or aunts or grandpa and all that they never call them by the first name so anyway she wrote she is the mother of a few children she said this is what happened please pray for us so in one of our talk show i shared this letter to that brother mohan and said you know this is what they have written what do you think from uh, god's point of view when god asked you to do this prayer uh, fasting prayer meetings so he shared from what god told him to do anyway we just closed the meeting and we went on with the next uh, program just few weeks ago i received a letter from this lady saying a terrible thing has happened to our pastor god has judged our pastor he and his family he his wife his son his daughter in law went to a neighboring city 12 miles away from their hometown to attend a wedding the pastor conducted the wedding and then as they were returning back at about 2 in the morning they had a head on crash with a truck and the pastor and his wife died on the spot and the son was badly injured his legs broke to pieces and the daughter in law was in a coma for 3 days and as a result of this there came a fear of god in the entire city that because this pastor had stood against a prayer movement god has judged him during these past few days you heard several times it been mentioned that when people stood against the prophet the true prophetic move of god how bobby mentioned about people dying people going mad and even neville shared how one of his church member went entirely mad we don't want that when we don't understand something let's hold our peace remember this last move of god will be the pure move of the holy spirit pure without any excesses without any flesh so we should not stand against the move of god rather we should humble ourselves and say lord how can we all work together with you amen let's stand up for a word of prayer i'm sorry to keep you all so long i lived up to my reputation is it okay everybody yes all right our loving and gracious father i have faithfully communicated all the words you showed me this morning and all the things that you showed me now to all your dear children who are present here and to all those who are watching this program online and i pray that every one who are here lord who heard this word will prepare their hearts and their minds to know you in a new manner lord your word says if we judge ourselves 
we will be spared from being judged. So help us, Lord, to judge ourselves all the time. As we read in your word, where the psalmist says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Lord, let this be our prayer, Lord. Let this be our prayer. Help us, Holy Spirit, to daily judge ourselves and convict us of those things that are displeasing in your eyes. Help us, Holy Spirit, to be the fair, beautiful, holy, bright of Christ that you want us to be without spot without wrinkle I thank you wonderful God I see a mighty angel standing in our midst right now very translucent but having a bluish light coming out from him. Clarity and understanding will be given to all those who will truly search their hearts and minds under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Let all the ministers of God who are present here truly Search your hearts, search your minds concerning the works that God has committed into your hands. Do not be afraid to sweep away all the dust and the rubbish out of your church. And be willing to allow the pruning work of the Holy Spirit to take place in your church. The Lord desires his bride to be beautiful, to be fair and beautiful. Thank you, wonderful God. Holy Father, thank you for making your will known to us. Thank you for these words that you spoke to us through your angel. Thank you, Lord. Now I pray, as your children will leave this place for a little break, that these words will ring in their hearts and minds and roll over their hearts and minds and they will meditate upon them and position themselves to be ready for your last day's move. Teach us, Holy Spirit, how to prepare our children for the last day's move of God. Teach us, dear Holy Spirit, how to prepare our youths to become warriors 